Hello everyone and welcome back to Tomorrow's and Beyond in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. In this video we begin with this in situ resource utilization unit that we landed on the surface of the moon in the previous video and somebody correctly noted that I still had the ore unlocked and that's why it wasn't generating ore. And when I unlock it, uh, the ore gets shared by the two because we have it connected to simple logistics. So yeah, they both got ore but uh, and they're both using ore and there's conversion going on so it's complicated. Uh, let me switch to the other one and stop it converting for a second and see. Um, yeah, maybe I should just unplug that thing. Let's make sure that this is working. So let's toggle plug here and now it's replenishing ore here. And as we time warp, we see that it continues to do so. The liquid hydrogen has boil off. Let's make sure that the conversion rate is good enough. Yeah, the conversion rate is good enough. We'll have this one do liquid hydrogen and the other one do liquid oxygen maybe. Um, then we'll toggle plug and they'll both sort of share the space anyway. So yes, that is happening. Now we might want like more drills because that ore gets depleted very quickly, doesn't it? But anyway, it does work. So we are good there and we can land more of these here. But first for this video, we are going to send crew up to the habitat that we attach to our big ship in orbit of the Earth. And we want to see whether it can be properly occupied and what Kerbalism does to the crew when they are inside. So that is what we're going to launch. Okay, so here we are with the Lynx capsule on top of Star Stage 2 on top of the Orion carrier plane at Boca Chica. And we are going to have our crew exit the launch access level. And first off is Piper, who is a pilot. And we have to do this because of the way Kerbalism works, because if we don't do this, they won't have their resources. If we start them in the command chair, they won't have their resources. So we have to sort of have them board into the command chairs and then they'll have all their stuff. So here we go with Piper into the command pod. We've got the launch escape system around it, just like with like Apollo or Orion, same sort of setup. The catch here is that the launch access arm was made for the Orion 3 space plane. And so it sort of clips into the seat here. It goes a little bit too far. We'll just ignore that for now. Okay, Piper is in her seat. And we also have an engineer, Elster. And it, it sort of rocks the whole thing. And it's, it's weird. It's still Kerbal Space Program after all. Okay, Elster. I'm pushing it. I'm pushing Kerbal Space Program here, but it is still Kerbal Space Program. Okay, board command chair. All right, they are both in, so we can retract the crew access arm. And unfortunately, it never lets me close the inner hatch, the one on the pod itself which is here, it's its own separate part, but when I say raise hatch, it feels like it's blocked by the, by the shroud of the launch escape system. Uh, when we release the launch escape system, then it'll be able to be closed, but before then apparently not. So we'll just have to close this hatch and they'll remain in their, their suits and <laughs> we'll have to close the inner hatch later, sorry. One little minor bit of problem there but anyway they are ready to go we are lined up SAS on throttle is up ignition and launch okay okay we are past the speed of sound now I guess we should see where Max Q is. Uh, well, we've passed it, definitely. We have passed Max Q. Maximum dynamic pressure is behind us. And we are rolling. So the entire system uses methane and oxygen, by the way. There's nothing else on here. The 
Lynx's service module runs on methane and oxygen. Uh, Star Stage 2 does as well. So that does simplify things. And we should have switched some engines off, actually. Okay. And... Shut down. That's close enough. Alright, separation. Uh, we want to focus on this. Make sure we're controlling from the right way. Kill rotation, RCS on. And ignition. And ignition. Oh, we should get rid of the launch escape system. Alright, um... Is it one? Yes, it's one. Alright, it is off. Alright, let me not use kill rotation. Let's get this properly programmed. So, the journey of Piper and Elster continues. Oh, yes, let's close that hatch. <laughs> oh, jeez. Nothing can be perfect around here. Okay, we are passing over Florida, and the launch continues. It's still a little bit of a while before we make orbit here. Okay, we're at Apoapsis. We are making our periapsis here, and shut down. That's good enough for now. Okay, and we'll make sure that the Second stage is in a suborbital trajectory, but we won't follow it down or anything. Um, just checking staging seems okay. All right. So on the Starliner launch, I noted that they had the Centaur remain in a suborbital trajectory and have the pod make orbit, but we are not doing that obviously here. Uh, so first of all, let's make sure that the pod is okay. Okay. All right, well, it has its RCS thrusters, and that's the important part. Okay, back to the stage, and we will deorbit. We could have left the fairing pieces in a suborbital trajectory, though. That might have been nice. Okay, that is suborbital. Now, this has to rendezvous with the target. And we have some inclination, but... Um, interestingly, it's not reading our delta V right. Uh, maybe... We should control from here? Oh, okay, it was controlling from the wrong direction. That was the problem. Uh, it does not, definitely doesn't have 6,000, but it has a lot, you see. Because this was meant to carry a pod over to the moon, get into orbit around the moon, and then, when I say pod, I mean uh, lander. It can carry a lander over to, uh, into orbit around the moon and then come back. So it's got a lot of delta V in it. It's not a light thing either, it's 22 tons. So, yep. Uh, we might want to increase the attitude adjustment time here. Now, certainly we don't need to launch it with full of fuel like this for this particular mission, but um, we're going to launch it on the Orion carrier plane anyway, so <laughs> there's no uh, there's no downside. But certainly with uh, if we launch some sort of other stage to it to connect up with it, it could be transferred over to the moon without too much trouble. Okay, lighting the engine for the first time. I was supposed to put a potentially a... Well, no, the Kerbalism itself has a failure mod, so I don't have to add a different failure mod. I just need to make sure that Kerbalism failures are working for these parts. That'll make things much more interesting, won't it? Well, I could manage to rendezvous as fast as I'd like, considering the fuel that we have, but I won't push it. We really need to manage our power, though. The way I did the solar panels on this apparently was not quite right. Okay, sun left is apparently okay. CO2 levels. Wait. There are no, there is no CO2. There's no CO, what, what do you mean CO2 levels? 
We have a scrubber that's running. It said something about CO2 levels, but... Hold on. CO2 poisoning 2%. The scrubber is working, too. But that's the pod scrubber. Let me check their seats. The seats have scrubbers, too, I think. Oh, no, maybe not. Okay, let's see. Leave seat. Now, I don't know what to do if they have 5% CO2 poisoning right now. I mean, they're in their little EVA packs. CO2 level is zero in the EVA suit. I, I don't really know what where the CO2 level is not zero, so it's tough to figure out. I'm gonna see if Piper can sit in one of the back seats, but this is obviously complicated now. Board command chair. Piper has less the uh, CO2 poisoning in Elster. Let's see, let's just move Elster as well. I don't know if playing musical chairs here will help, but... Well, I did not see this one coming. The pod itself has a scrubber. But maybe I'll need to give the seats a scrubber. Yeah, I guess I don't have a... I, it, there's a shielding option on them, but I didn't put a CO2 scrubber on the command chairs. Maybe if I put a CO2 scrubber on the command chairs, it'll be okay. Um, let me add... I'm gonna, I'm gonna quit the game. I'm gonna add a CO2 scrubber to the command chairs. And see if that works. Well, we are here for troubleshooting. Okay, so the situation is sort of curious. I tried to add carbon dioxide to this command chair, but that didn't work. But that might be because this was already deployed and normally the resources don't get updated automatically when you change the configuration on the crafts that are already active. The modules do, so we do see a scrubber running here. And so it has a scrubber, but does it work? Um, they're at 22 and 19% CO2 poisoning and it's still going up. So, my guess is no, when they're in the suits, it doesn't count. There's an EVA scrubber that's supposed to be running, but that's clearly not working. Now we've been at it for 19, I mean, sorry, 11 hours. Um, this gotta be bad. I think we should bring them down. I think we, we are going to abort immediately uh so we are gonna try not to kill our kerbals here for once maybe we'll have to make rendezvous in under 11 hours i mean i guess that's a possibility but i don't know what happens when they get into the other pod i mean the into the habitat whether they'll be all right uh, the habitat does have the accommodations where they're basically in a pod at that point and not in the equivalent of a command chair, but clearly this whole pass-through system with them in the command chairs is causing more problems than I expected. All right, uh, we are going to sell the fuel down, ignition. I don't know if we're in time. It's driving me crazy though that there is no carbon dioxide visible here. So I don't know how it's keeping account of that. I don't like that. I'll have to see. I don't know what parameters they have. We're, we're going on a steep descent here. I don't know what kind of parameters they have for their EVA scrubber. Obviously not good enough. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. CO2 poisoning is now only at 2%. What? Uh, I guess I guess it got cleaned up from the scrubber. All right, all right. Uh, prograde, prograde. We want to abort the descent, abort the descent. We've got a lot of Delta V in this pod after all. Abort descent. Proceed with mission. Kerbalism is really yanking me around here. 
though, gotta say, CO2 level 1.55%, it says. I don't know. Maybe it's only saying that because we're on a subworld trajectory. I don't know. <laughs> it's like, oh, y you decided to abort the mission? All right, I'll, I'll keep your kerbals alive. Something, you know. You'll have to keep an eye on it, but it's going down. The CO2 level is also going down, 1.54 now. Okay, maybe it works. That'll, I mean, I certainly am relieved if it actually works. Okay, we are now in render range of the vessel. It's around here somewhere. Okay, we need to kill the relative velocity. Once again... Game is not there. It is trying to hide from me. Maybe we can use this to boost it up a bit. It is in a fairly low orbit right now. I don't want to use its own fuel. Okay, there it is. The hab and one tank, basically. Um, our CO2 levels are starting to rise. Why? It's at 2% again. I don't know why. It's starting to get CO2 poisoning again. I don't understand the CO2 thing. It's definitely going up. Well, we'll see what happens when we dock and everything. I'm not going to worry about it right now. But that's troublesome because the Lynx is supposed to be able to go to the moon on its own, right? I mean, this has only been 22 hours. Okay, lining up here. We really need the CO2 scrubbers to work in sort of an omni fashion on the entire vessel instead of just like on one cabin. I mean, it's a little bit weird. It's a connected living space, I swear. Do I need collect connected living space for it? I don't know. But it is one, I'm just saying. Oh yeah, we only have two thrusters on. I was supposed to bring up some extra thrusters. Ah, uh, well. We'll have to do that with a subsequent crew. Okay, we have docked. Alright, let's see. What, what's happening with the CO2 right now? Now CO2 per, uh, percent level is zero. They were at 28% CO2 poisoning just a little while ago. Let's leave the- uh, right now the pod is its own thing. Um, let's see what happens over time. It is going down. Okay, okay. Well, let's open up the hatch and have them go through and everything. I need the pod's own down. There we go. Okay. Uh, okay, looks like we can go through. Let's have a Kerbal. Elster, fine. Uh, leave seat. Let's get Elster's point of view on this. It's tough when the camera's so fuzzy. I think that's a, a factor of KS3P, which I use, the post-processing mod. But let's see. Activate camera? Okay. Now we're we're looking from Elster's point of view. <laughs> oh gosh. Oh no. Okay. Not that this helps me figure out everything. Okay, we are now in the hab. There's the exercise treadmill. There are the computers. Here, let's, let's look around here. That's the wooden airlock we've got. Wood everywhere, those are the crew quarters. Okay. Two, crew hatch. Uh, let me get out of this camera. Okay. So yeah, Elster's there. I need to make the windows work. Somehow missed that. Okay. We've got some Z fighting on these two. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. We are going to board. Oh. 
board. Okay, fine. Grab and board. So Elster is in one of the crew quarters. And we'll see whether Elster can stay in there long term. Of course, there are also seats and all. But we made sure that we had crew quarters just in case. All right, Piper. Yeah, that's uh, unfortunate Z fighting there. I'll have to figure that out. They were the, the doors were animated originally, so they were doing something different. Okay, uh, maybe this one already has. Oh no, uh, board. Okay, so they've boarded. They're inside their own little berths. And hopefully that means that all their functions will be shared by the entire craft now, finally. Solar panel. Our electric charge is a little bit weird, though. This ship, it should be getting a lot more power, shouldn't it? Let me try and pirouette and see if that helps. Well, I believe we need to get some sort of solar array thing, a large one, over here for this. It doesn't look like we're getting nearly enough power here. Maybe there's it's all the scrubbers or, and life support stuff that's working. I sort of wanted to get this into a higher orbit, but we'll wait until we get some sort of solar rays up. All right, I'm going to launch solar rays to this. We, I mean, the problem is we could launch quite a lot because like, our payload capacity of the lower orbit is pretty high. So, hmm, do we want to just launch solar rays, or do we want to try and figure out something a little bit more complicated? I think maybe something more sophisticated would be nice. Okay, so here is our truss, and obviously I've made it much more complicated than it strictly needed to be. We've got huge solar panels that probably ought to get more power than they do. Uh, it's about, let's say, 18 kilowatts around Earth, and of course after some time they will degrade. Alas. But yeah, they, they probably ought to get more. It's like 1960s level or something, I don't know. But we've got RCS thrusters on it. We've got little radiators because uh, KSB Interstellar, I think, said that it generated heat. So I thought maybe we should. And we've got fairly large tanks of MMH and NTO for maneuvering. We've got some RCS thrusters on here as well. Uh, though we'll probably shut these off uh, when we dock because otherwise they'll be blowing at things. So those are only docking thrusters. And of course, we've got the ports. We've got a controller here. And we've got the a docking port here so that some other vessel can dock to it. If we are rotating along an axis uh, in order to generate artificial gravity, then something can dock to this. It won't be able to dock to either end after all. So that's what this is for. Okay, well, let's try and launch it. The Star Stage 2 is going to have to help us out getting over there. And we'll see how that works. Let me just make sure staging is okay. And we'll go. Fortunately, it looks like we don't have long to wait. And I say fortunately because technically it's got uh, power running out. And I think Kerbalism will keep track of that. So that would be a problem. Uh, they seem to be breathing normally now. That's good. But we do want a quick intercept here. And... It's behind us. Uh, that might be okay. It's in a low orbit. We'll try to get into a higher orbit. Okay. Star Stage 2 has comms. You know what? I, I think I want to quickly roll back and add comms to the truss itself. Okay. We were already lined up. We've got the extra dish on. So let's give it a go. Okay, SAS on, throttle is up, ignition, and launch. And once again, the Orion carrier plane doing its thing. We should be past max Q now. Yep, it's going down. And we're rolling. 
and turning off engines. I still need to create a proper mount for these things. Obviously the little decoupler there is not entirely perfect right now. Okay, and shut down a little bit past there. Okay, I didn't really want to do the fairings at the same time. Oh, don't tilt down, please. All right, separation. Okay, fairings. I didn't really want the fairings to boop that either, but okay. RCS Pro Grade. Okay, let's try and ignite to help things out here. All right, back on course. Let's set this up. Well, I think it's safe to extend this uh, Communitron 88-88. It's sort of counterbalancing that docking port there. Uh, but it occurs to me that the solar panel... No, the solar panel will be clear of it. I thought about putting the solar... Well, might not quite be clear of it. I thought about putting the solar panels on pistons. Might have wanted to do that. But since they were at least uh, not blocked by those tanks, I thought it would be alright. Cubitron 88 is bigger than I thought it would be. I guess Realism Overhaul scaled it up somewhat. Well, Piper and Elster seem to be doing alright. The CO2 poisoning is non-existent and we have 2% stress though. Presumably from the previous times they've been nearly poisoned by CO2. I mean, that was stressful for me too, just, uh, just for a side note. I'll unlock the fuel on the truss, but the truss only has RCS ports in order to use it, so somewhat limiting. They're good RCS ports, but not as good as engines. Uh, the target is still quite behind us, so we would, in order to get a quick rendezvous, get into a higher orbit. Okay, well, we've got a start of something, but maybe not enough of something. 208 meters per second, I think we can push a little further than that. But maybe we should wait until that intersect point. Okay, well... That's pretty high on the apoapsis. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but we'll see. All right. Decouple. Did I decouple the right thing? I hope so. Um, all right, you retrograde. Okay, we probably need some more decoupling force on there so that it's not so close to the payload, but rotated. Okay. Definitely has enough to deorbit itself. Off it goes. And that's a good orbit for that. Okay, now this thing. We do have comms. We might as well extend the tiny little radiators on it. We'll be on battery power though for now. I don't want to extend the huge solar panels. Oh, this, this radiator might... Uh, oh, it is still clear of the Commutron 88-88, so okay. And this one? Uh, that one, not so much. We might have wanted to shift or tilt the Commutron a little bit. But anyway, we'll leave it be like that. So, activate all the RCS thrusters. Are they active? Okay, now they're active. Fortunately, most of this thing's mass is fuel right now. Well, that's zero. Uh-oh, we lost communication. Oh, great timing. Well, we'll just have to wait. We are now drifting away from it. Okay, we have communication back. Okay, that's as good as we can get right now. Piper Kerman is sweating. Ah, uh, boy. 
Looks like we're getting there a little bit late. Um, climatization is a problem. No. Okay, let's let's jump to it and see if we can do something. And um, freezing. No. No. We're we're we were so close. Um. Hold on. We we can solve this. Uh, if I can get to it. We're gonna have them go into the links. The links will have enough power. We'll have them temporarily abandon this. Well, I mean, this is why we need to test it. Uh, we don't have any power at all. Well, definitely shouldn't be out of nitrogen, but how is it going to be without any power? I don't know. Oh no! It said froze to death. Board command chair. Okay, okay. Um, it looks like we've lost Piper. Undock. Uh, we're on the nighttime side though. I don't know if this is gonna be any good. I don't think we need to close the hatch. It doesn't even understand that aspect of it. Really? No Piper anymore? No Piper? Yeah, Piper perished. Uh, can Elster survive until we get to the daylight side? Oh, Elster is breathing normally again. Okay, um, we may need to rotate to recharge. Okay, we are recharging here. But we lost Piper. That is horrible. Well, let's close the pod for now. Okay, the pod is closed. We'll get the truss over to this thing. This thing is recharging. See, okay, here's the thing. This is recharging, the other thing recharges. But when they're docked together, they don't recharge. I... I object. I think Piper died needlessly. I tried various orientations when the Lynx and this were docked together and it didn't generate enough power. In fact, this was the orientation of this when the Lynx was docked to it. And it was draining power like neither of them was generating any. So, I don't know what you guys think about that. I think I'll, I'll pause it here because I've done... We'll try and get all the pieces together, the solar truss, this, and the pod. But I want to know what you guys think about this because uh, this is mighty suspicious. This is recharging. That's recharging. But when they were docked together, they had a draw of like 13 to 18 for no reason. And I object to that. So, yeah. Did did Piper get killed by Kerbal? That's what I want to know. So, yeah. We'll, we'll hold on here and we'll continue this in the next video. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.